Welcome to another episode by PixelMorp. In, in today's tutorial, we're going to go over how to install an SEO plugin for your WordPress based website. Uh, for this particular episode, we're going to go with the Yoast SEO plugin. So we're going to go into our dashboard, into plugins, link in the admin sidebar, and add new. We're going to type in the search results in the search bar there, Yoast SEO, which was formerly called WordPress SEO by Yoast. And as you can see, they have over 1 million active installations with four and a half stars from 1,418 reviewers. It was updated last month. So let's uninstall this SEO plugin. Let's click to activate. Once you activate your plugin for the first time, you're going to get a couple of uh, notifications on top. Uh, one says, don't miss your crawl errors. Connect with Google Search Console here. The next one is, Yoast SEO has been updated to the newest version. Find out what's new. And then it says, you still have the default WordPress tagline. Even an empty one is probably better. That's because I'm on my local host. And over here, it's I'm blocking my robots.txt file. In my robots.txt file, I'm blocking access. And again, that's because I'm on my locals. So with these, once you look at them, you can um, deactivate those. And you're going to see you have a new link in your sidebar here. It says SEO. So when you first go there, you can click on SEO there. And you're going to see you're brought to a new page on your dashboard. Uh, first, you can take a tour of the plugin itself. You can view um, the latest changes and you can restore defaults if you need. The next tab allows you to add your information uh, for your site. And then if you want to add your Webmaster Tools information for these various services, you can do so here. And for the security tab, unchecking this box allows authors and editors to redirect posts, no index them, and do other things you might not want them to do. Um, so in this one, we normally keep that checked. If you made any changes, you just want to save those changes. Next, we'll go to Titles and Meta. So in this one, we tend to leave this as is, unchecked. The separator we tend to go with is the short hyphen separator and then here you can choose on your home page title template meta description template so if you want to create a template for that you can do so here if you have post types um, these are the various post types that you have currently by default which is post pages and media you can choose a template for those and a description you can choose whether or not you want to no index or follow these particular types of post types. And you can show, decide if you want to um, have a snippet preview in the date, show date and snippet preview. And if you want to, for this particular post type, hide the Yoast SEO meta box, you can do so by clicking hide. The same goes for pages and for media. For taxonomies, we have similar options. You can choose the taxonomy structure that you chose that you so desire. You can add a description to the taxonomies. You can no index them and you can hide them. Same thing for tags and for your formats. In this section, for your author archives, you can um, set up a template for them as well and then if you want if you're a single author website you can um, add no index or no follow to the author archives and then if you have special pages that you want to create a new type of template for you can do so here For other, if you want to 
no index sub pages of archives you can check on that one right here uh, you can use meta keyword tags um, if you want to do that uh, you can check this item there's still some um, SEO specialists that believe that using meta keyword tags is beneficial for your website uh, Yoast doesn't recommend you doing so and actually in a bunch of other major SEO um, communities they believe that meta keyword tags are no longer uh, beneficial it doesn't really hurt to uh, check this if you want um, but it supposedly it doesn't really help you anymore and this one if you want to prevent search engines from using the DMARS description for pages from the site in search results I tend to click yes uh, check on that one and prevent search engines from using the Yahoo directory I tend to do that one as well so you make those changes save changes now for the social this is where you're going to put your various links for Facebook Twitter Instagram etc for the various social networks and if you want to add to open graph uh, you can do that here um, it's checked by default and then if you want to put in a an image uh, for your front page settings you can do that here by uploading an image adding the title and description and then if you want to put an image URL you can do that here and then if you want to look at the Facebook insights and admins you can do that in this section um, to be accessible uh, in Facebook insights for your site you need to specify a Facebook admin this can be a user if you have an app for your site you could use that as well more information could be found here so you can put in the Facebook app ID if you have one there same goes for Twitter you can add some Twitter information in this section Pinterest and Google Plus now another good feature of the Yoast SEO plugin is the XML sitemaps XML sitemaps help your website to be indexed by search engines like Google Bing and others that use those search engines results so you're gonna want to um, have this done you don't need to do anything to generate the XML sitemap uh, in order to take up time to generate after publishing a post it does it does it automatically for you and then you can um, disable author user sitemap I tend to leave that the way it is and then post the post types please check the appropriate uh, box below if there's a post type that you do not want to include in your sitemap it tends to default to media that's a good selection and then if you want to exclude certain posts from your sitemap you will get the ID of the post and I'll show you how to do that in a minute um, and then you would just use a comma separator list in this section for taxonomies uh, you can check to see which taxonomies you do not want to include in your sitemap as well in advanced you can enable breadcrumbs which is a pretty good feature and then you can add the settings here for those breadcrumbs save changes permalink structure you can choose uh, to strip out the category from the category URL if you chose um, you can redirect attachment URLs to the parent post URL you can choose to remove stop words now there's um, back and forth talks about is this beneficial for your SEO and some people say it is because you are only allowed a certain length in your title for Google and for Bing so when you start having words like and a as etc um, those take up valuable space in your title of your article um, others believe that it's better to keep it in there because it makes it sound more natural um, so it's really up to you I tend to leave it um, to remove stop words from slugs 
and then you can check out these other options as well um, remove the reply to com variables if you want to have a trailing slash and all category and tag URLs you can check this off here and then you have some other options here as well uh, we tend to hide the RSD links and the um, various other links here but these are just settings we tend to go with and then if you want you can um, have the RSS information uh, with the specific default information set here and you can use these various parameters if you wanted to choose those now for tools you can choose a bulk editor file editor import and export so for the bulk editor it'll bring you here and you'll see your various posts that you have set up um, if you want to put in a new Yoast SEO title you can put that new title here for the file editor you go here it shows you your robots.txt file um, at this point we don't have a robots.txt file and it shows you your .hc access file the way you have it set up currently I would be very careful with the section uh, because it is very advanced and not, not recommended if you're not familiar with these various types of technology but if you are then this is a great way to uh, make changes to your uh, specific files it is best though um, to make the changes on your local uh, div local site on your computer uh, versus your live production site that way um, if you make any changes you can easily uh, re um, um, revert back to the uh, the way it was before you made the changes and then if you want to import settings from another let's say you have two or three websites with this plugin and you have your specific settings that you like you can import that file of the settings or if you want to export it you can do the same thing here if you have other SEO plugins that you've used in the past and you want to import that information you can do so here and here so now we have the uh, search console uh, to allow your SEO to fetch your Google search console information just enter your Google authorization code so you would click here and then it would you will be prompted um, to sign in and give your credentials and then the code you would enter over here and then authenticate the um, the service for Yoast to go forward now Yoast is a free plugin um, and that's great because it helps to really advance your website and take it to the next level they do have other advanced functionality that does come at a premium uh, cost and it's worth it these are some of the best um, SEO plugins you can find and these add-ons add a significant amount so if you want to check them out you have the Yoast SEO premium um, with additional features if you do a lot of video uh, this could be helpful if you're a news website uh, this could be helpful and if you're really um, interested in local SEO this can help you with some local SEO topics uh, to rank better locally so that's just the basic settings now let's look at how it looks on a post so if we go into the previous post that we had previously if you scroll down to the bottom you would notice that we didn't have this one section where it says Yelp's SEO but now that we added it to our website we have this feature um, so by default it gives you the SEO title you might want to keep that you might want to change it if you don't enter anything by default it shows you that but I'm just gonna put in my information it always shows you that you want to put in the name of your website at the end with the hyphen separating it also gives you um, the meta description where you would give a 150 character description you would want this to be very specific and it actually shows you 
when you're over the character count. So that's a nice feature so you can really make sure that it's precise. If you want to do a focus keyword, this is this allows you for um, analysis of your website. So let's just say SEL. Okay. And then you no know, focus keyword was set for this post. If you do not set a focus keyword, no, it can't be calculated. See here, the focus keyword it shows you was not in the article heading, not in the page title not in the URL, not found in the content, and not found in meta description. So let's change that. We're just going to change that. We're going to change this. We are going to change that. We're going to seed it in a couple of different locations. and see what it tells us. So now it just says it's not in the page title. So we did put it into the base title, it just might not have caught it yet. And we're going to put it into the meta description. Okay. All right, so we got it almost everywhere. Might be because of the size that we chose. Okay, but we got it almost everywhere. So you're going to want to make sure you have all these set to green. So that way um, it shows you have a green light and your SEO is good. You're going to notice here that you also have this SEO you can check. Okay. Let's see the description. Okay, so when you do that, it's going to show you to update this page, now it's a save a draft, or update and check this tab again. So there are 134, it gives you a basic rundown on your score for this specific focus keyword. So you're going to want to get these all to green. Um, it's going to give you some ideas on how to do that. So that's a very good feature to have. This by itself is a premium a feature for some external services and um, it's free with this plugin now if you go to the advanced section um, you can have some more customization here you can choose to follow no follow if you want to have on uh, the meta robots advanced you can no index on the um, Yahoo directory or some of these other things and then for social, you can leave most of the information the same, or you can add some more customized information, Facebook title, description, image, if you want to upload a default image. Same thing for Twitter, if you want to add a default title in Twitter, description, and image. Um, it gives you the sizes uh, for these specific things that you should use, and that is a good feature. And this is when people share your content on the social media pages that they're on. So that way you'll have some uniformity of your, you know, your, your articles and your posts. And it helps with your branding purposes. So that's a pretty cool feature there. So once you make all the changes, you can review it, check it out, make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. We're going to go back to general. Still not showing in the page title, even though we do have it. Oh, I see, right here. There we go. We had it up here, but as you noticed, you needed to have it over here in the SEO title. So now we have all green lights on that section. So we are good to go. We'll update the post. We will view the post. And nothing's changed on the front end, but on the back end, if we view page source, we now have some more information that's been provided by the SEO plugin. Um, specifically, the Twitter information, 
um, some of the article stuff and the robots information it's been customized a lot of this stuff would have been time consuming to reproduce for each and every single article or page that you want to create this plugin allows you to do it in a relatively um, fast amount of time so that is a quick overview of WordPress I mean Yoast SEO which is formerly known as WordPress SEO by Yoast um, again just as a recap you just go to plugins add new put in the name of the plugin you're looking for in return as you can see we already have it installed it's going to be in the left hand um, admin section and then you just update the information with your settings that you would like for it to have this will help take your website to the next level as it gives your site the SEO boost that it would need and helps you to um, have proper sharing with the social networks it generates the XML sitemap for you which is uh, integral an integral part of SEO because it'll help with the search engine indexing of your website and each time you create a new article or page that will automatically be added uh, to your XML sitemap so that is a quick rundown of Yoast SEO hope you found this tutorial to be helpful if you have any questions thoughts ideas please leave them in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe as we'll be adding new content to the channel as uh, the days go by thank you and I look forward to hearing from you